And hello everybody, welcome here as we get ready for our third race of the fourth season of the NRSL Reese's Rally Car Series. See, if I say it slowly, I can say it correctly. If I say it fast, I mess it up to high heaven. Anyway, we're getting ready for our third race of the season. It's our first power stage race of the season as well. And guess what? It's another track change. Yep, we were supposed to go to Monster Truck Rally. And silly me, when I put the schedule together, I forgot the fact that this is a 37 car field, and back when we did the Stadium Super Truck Series, I knew in my mind it could only hold 28 cars. But I decided to foolishly put it on the schedule anyway, and when I got there, oh, it can only hold 28 cars. Yep, we're changing the race. So we're here at a track that's actually making its debut on the channel. We are at Ice Planet 2002. This is a, a custom track that was made by Sinon. A lot of people will know who that is. Uh, he also made the track Inferno, which uh, actually made its debut over in the Marvel Studios Cup Series last season. So you guys, if you want to check it out, see what that track looks like, head over and see Levi's video over on Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel. But nonetheless, we're getting ready here today to go racing at Ice Planet 2002. And as you can see, this, this track kind of reminds me, just in a little way, of Trois Rivieras, which we'll be going to later on this season, and the fact that it's a pretty walled in road course. So it's more of a technical road course than it is a road course all about speed and finesse. It's really you have to hit your marks and that might lead for a little bit of difficulty in passing here today, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. Now, what do I mean as far as power stage race? Well, with the power stage race, obviously the goal as it's been all season to finish in the top 10, but if you finish in the top 5, you get extra bonus points. The winner gets an extra 5 bonus points, second gets an extra 4, third gets an extra 3. 4th gets an extra 2, and 5th gets an extra 1 bonus point for today's finishing Drivers, results. Drivers, start your engines! And as we get the command, how about a couple of drivers that have struggled this year so far in the first two races, starting on the front row. Carson Gum, who comes in 35th out of the uh, 37 drivers in the points. He's got the pole alongside of him, Ryan Acosta, who finished dead last last week, and he's 36th in points coming into this race. Both drivers really could use a good run here today. Maybe it'll happen with good starting track position as we get ready to go racing. And we're waiting. And the green flags in the air, we're racing at Ice Planet. Ryan Acosta around the outside is going to take the lead. Now Cole Deaver moves by Carson Gum for second. Gum now back into the third position. Someone took that corner wide. One of the Subaru Imprezas. Couldn't tell who it is. Unfortunately, this track, uh, it's, it's such a high graphics track. It kind of makes the graphics of the cars not so good. So as far as uh, differentiating different Subarus from each other, it's going to be a little bit difficult without me actually going back and singling out that car to be able to see what the number is. You can see that very quickly we are on to lap two. It's not exactly a big racetrack, just a little over a mile in length. So that's why there are 60 laps on the ticker. The assumption that we will uh, be finishing out this half hour race somewhere within the range of around lap 60. I'm just going to have to wait and see if my calculations are correct. As battle is on for second, Cole Deaver has it. Carson Gum wants it back. That's a couple of Citroen Xaras battling for that spot. We really haven't seen the Xaras up at the front of the field this season. I think the only Xara that has a top 10 finish this season is Sebastian Kukulon. He got that last week at Sonoma. As far as the point standings coming into this race, look. It's a tie atop the point stands between our two former winners this season. Our winner from the Dakar opening stage, Wade Brummer, and last week's Sonoma winner, Derek Hamill. They hold a six-point lead over Cole Baker, who is right now second in the point standings. Third in the points is Jordan Lopez. He's seven points back. Actually, he's tied with uh, Adam Garcia, seven points back. Nine points back is Diego Yepes in sixth. Uh, Jesse Turner, he is seventh. He is 10 points back. 13 points back in eighth is Mitchell Collins. And Levi McIntyre, Jonathan Zorland, they are tied for ninth. They are 15 points out. The other drivers so far this season that have points at this time are 
Austin LaPlante, Jessica Shelton, Patrick Smith, Kyle Matthews, Trey Wright, Sebastian Kukulon, Benny Watson, and James Shelley. And I believe all of them are down in the single digits as far as points received this season. The driver that I saw go way wide in the corner early on, I couldn't distinguish who it was, is this car right here, and that is Mitchell Collins, who comes into this race eighth in points. Uh, 10 points, no, make that 13 points out of the top spot. Battle is on for second. Carson Gum, Cole Deaver back at it again. And Carson Gum clear, Deaver is the question. Looks like he will through this corner. So the pole sitter goes back to second. Now trying to run down Ryan Acosta for the top spot. Another driver that has not got any points yet this season is Carter Friesen. You gotta think he'd feel right at home at this track. They get a lot of snow and ice up in Canada, don't they? He's under, uh, or he's attacking rather, Jonathan Zorlin for the fifth position. Zorlin had a great run last week, finishing in the uh, fifth position, I believe it was, at Sonoma. And picking up his first points of the season, and now he's going to get knocked out of the top five as Carter Friesen is going to take the spot. I thought he was going to take the spot, but right there, Zorlin around the outside gets the spot back. While behind them, you've got Chris Dollarton trying to run down Dylan Young. We haven't talked about Dylan Young really all season long in his first two starts. Dylan Young has an average finishing position of 17th. That's a lot better than Chris Dollarton, and his first two starts has an average finish of 26th. Back in the first week at Dakar Rally, he was actually battling for the race lead, ironically enough, with the car behind him, Ryan Brommer. So those two, I bet they haven't forgotten each other. They were battling for the lead, and Ryan Brommer, I don't know if it was him who made the contact or if Dalton made the contact. They made contact with each other, end of story. And both of them spun out while battling for the race lead. And then last week didn't get really any better for Chris Dollarton. He ended up getting into it... Uh, in the S's, I forgot with who, and uh, got put into the wall. I believe it was with Matt McIntyre, if memory serves me correctly. So let's put it this way. Chris Dollarton has not had good luck the last couple of weeks with Mitsubishi Lancers. It was Ryan Brommer back in the first week, and in the second week it was Matt McIntyre. So I think uh, if Chris Dollarton never sees a Mitsubishi Lancer for the rest of the season, I think he'll be a very happy person and maybe actually finish out a race. Right now he is in eighth, Brommer is in ninth, and right now Johnny Gardner it's currently intense. You got three of the Citroen Xaras up here inside of the top 10 right now. Uh, Gardner's teammate got a top 10 last week, that being Sebastian Kukulon. And I'm looking up here at the ticker, and Carson Gum is slowly reeling in Ryan Acosta for the lead. When I looked before, it was about seven tenths of a second, and now he's cut it down by half. He's only three tenths back, and he is reeling Ryan Acosta in. We know Carson Gum is a, has a good car, and you know that he's been able to make passes. He passed Cole Deaver to get the second position back, and surprising to me that at this track, there's actually some pretty good passing zones. We've seen some pretty good battles through the front of the field so far, and one might be heating up again between Carter Friesen and Jonathan Zorlin for fifth. about our two previous winners on the season? Wade Brummer and Derek Hamill. Where are they currently at? Are they anywhere close to the top 10 to be able to try and get some more points here this week? And so far, I don't see them. There's Hamill. He's back in 27th right now, last week's winner. Where is Wade Brummer? He's nowhere to be found. There he is, he's up on the outside line. Right now, he's scored in 34th, but I believe he just lost that spot. And I think he's about to lose 35th to Cole Baker, so I think he's back to 36th. Matthews right there in 37th, dead last right now, as everybody is still on the lead lap and still running. And of course, it's gonna be interesting too to see about pit stops here at this track. Because pretty certain they cannot make it the full 60 laps without coming to pit road at least once and we saw how pit stops last week at Sonoma played a huge factor in the outcome of who won that race. Adam Garcia looked like he was the strongest car of the day. After pit stops he came out second behind Derek Hamill and could not wrestle the lead back and Derek Hamill went to victory lane all due to the timing of the pit stop. 
Question is, who's going to be the leader when the pit stops begin? Because Carson Gums still right there on the back bumper of Ryan Acosta. Carson Gum average finish in his first two starts of 32nd. And Ryan Acosta average finish of 33rd. Both drivers have really struggled. Cole Deaver, he did gain three spots in the point standings. Because, I mean, you can gain spots in points even though you haven't gotten points uh, based off of your average finish. So Cole Deaver moved from 33rd to 30th in points, but still, that's not where Cole Deaver wants to be in the standings. And I mean, just, just to show how a win in the scoring system works. I mean, right now, as things would stand, Ryan Acosta, if the finish were now, Ryan Acosta would be the new points leader. Why? Well, he would get 25 points for winning, which would tie him for Derek Hamill and Wade Brummer this season for the points lead. They both would win as well. But bear in mind what I said at the beginning of this race. This is a power stage race, which means that the winner gets an extra five bonus points. So Ryan Acosta right now would be in line for 30 points. That's what these power stages are for, to take away the opportunity for there to end up being a nine driver uh, tie for the points lead heading into the season finale. These bonus points in the three power stage races that we have designated are to eliminate that possibility. And Carson Gum, he wants to have those bonus points. He is all over the back bumper of Ryan Acosta for the top position. Almost a third away through this race. Still a long ways to go with 21 minutes still on the ticker. Now Carson Gum has caught Ryan Acosta. Now that he's caught him, what can he do with him? He's got to get a run. I think, I think in these corners especially because there's not that long of straightaways. It looks long from a spectator point, but in terms of Behind the wheel, there's not a whole heck of a lot of time in these straightaways to get a run to make a move into the corner. So Carson Gum, I think what he's got to do is he's got to back up his corner and get a run off of the corner to be able to have the straightaway speed to get to the inside when they enter into the next corner. But little by little, he has been faster than Ryan Acosta. I mean, even on his back bumper last time by, Ryan Acosta ran a 36-105. Carson Gum was a one. 3 five, so that says to me he is backing up his corners a little bit. Not by much, though. He's still right on the bumper of Ryan Acosta. Wow, he messed up that corner, though. Boy, Carson Gum. I don't know if he entered in too low and as consequence it pushed up or what, but he lost some ground through that turn, and now Ryan Acosta, a little bit of breathing room between himself and the 39. And that might bring Cole Deaver back into the picture along with the 96 of Mitchell Collins. Jonathan Zorland's been able to shake Carter Friesen loose in that battle for fifth. It's now a battle for sixth between Friesen and Dylan Young. Chris Dalton right there now cracking the top ten. Levi McIntyre up to ninth and Ryan Brommer now drops back into the tenth position. McIntyre had a top 10 at the season opener at Dakar opening stage. Comes into this race currently situated in ninth in the point stands. He's 15 points out of the top spot for the points lead. Right now running in ninth, he would be in line to get, I believe it's two points. Yep. Every point helps, but really finishing up in the top three is where you really want to be because that's where you get the most points. Winner gets 25 points, second gets 18, and third gets 15. You finish sixth on down, you get eight, six, four, two, and one. There's a battle for ninth. Ryan Brummer trying to get to the inside of Levi McIntyre, and Chris Dollarton's looking at his rearview mirror saying, please keep that 87 as far away from me as possible. It's pretty spread out, at least up here towards the front. Top two separated last time by by about half a second. We'll see if Carson Gum has been able to make up any ground, or did he think that was his only opportunity for now, and now he's just kind of riding and waiting for the pit stop. Let's see, gap between the two leaders cut down by seven one-hundredths, but nothing majorly significant. So if I'm Carson Gum now, I think that maybe I've had my one shot. It didn't work. 
Now I just got to keep myself within striking distance of the 90 and wait for whenever that pit stop takes place. There's no points for leading the lap. There's no points for leading the most laps. So I think right now the strategy is all about setting yourself up for when that pit stop takes place. And the question is, when is it going to be? I think of our pit stops in last week's race at Sonoma took place somewhere, I think, if I recall correctly, I think it was somewhere nearing the 10 minute mark. Got a ways to go for that in this one as we are not even yet 17 minutes away from the conclusion of this race, but nonetheless, turning around much faster lap times here as well. I mean, it took about a minute and 15 seconds, a little less, to get around a lap at Sonoma. It's only taking them about a little over half a second to complete laps here at Ice Planet. But based off what I'm seeing, we're gonna be almost right on par as far as the ticker goes of how far they make it. Looks like it might be just around 60 laps. Ryan Acosta still with a rear deck lid full of Carson Gum, who has been able to reel Acosta back in. So it looks like Carson Gum might not exactly be heeding the suggestion I had of riding and kind of biding my time for that pit stop. Looks like he might be tuning up the band to maybe try again for the top position. You can see he's running a much different line than Ryan Acosta, so that says to me he's experimenting, seeing what his car is able to do in a lane opposite of the driver ahead of him. To his credit, it really isn't losing him any time on the race leader, Ryan Acosta. But at the same time, I would kind of wonder if going out of the groove, if that's going to cause his tires to wear down more and force him maybe to have to come to pit road earlier than he would originally want to. See him peeking out of line there off the final corner. I'm not really sure what to make of that. I don't know if that's the way he's entering into the corner. It's allowing him to drive lower on exit or if he's trying to peek his nose out in order to get a little bit of clean air to the grill for better straightaway speed. I'm not sure. It might be one or the other. It might be neither of them. As we start getting closer and closer to the midway points, matter of fact, we're about to hit the midway point of this race. We're starting to get some uh, battles heating up here. Not only is Carson Gum back on the bumper of Ryan Acosta, but you've also got a brewing battle for third. Mitchell Collins is slowly reeling in Cole Deaver for that spot. Then behind them, you got a three-way battle for fifth between Zorlin, Friesen, and Dylan Young. Then it's a long ways back, over two seconds from Dylan Young back to Chris Dollerton. Was it a good battle here with Levi McIntyre, Ryan Brommer, Johnny Gardner? Diego Yepes, Adam Garcia, last week's runner-up there in the 13th position. There's Dylan Poteet who had an incident with Matthew Rodriguez last week. And then the two drivers that finished 10th in the first two races of the season. Benny Watson right now in 14th and James Shelley who finished in the 10th position last week. He's in 15th and if you didn't see it, Cole Deaver just gave up the third position to come to pit road. So the cycle of pit stops has begun now. And Cole Deaver has already hit pit road. And here comes the race leader, Ryan Acosta, to the pit lane. Jonathan Zorlin is in as well, giving up the fourth position. So Carson Gum will go to the race lead. Cole Deaver just now leaving pit road. Things will cycle around, so Deaver will probably be back on the lead lap, provided he came down pit road correctly, exited pit road correctly, and his pit crew gave him a decent pit stop. That looks like Carson Gum starting to slow here. It looks like he might be coming to pit road this time by. Remember, it was the green flag pit stops last week that shuffled up who was going to win the race. Cole Deaver coming in early. Is that going to maybe be the move that's going to get him the top position? Now, he's got D uh, Mitchell Collins ahead of him. Collins is going to cycle the lead now, but still has to come pit road. He's going to have Mitchell Collins ahead of him. I don't really know if there's such a thing as draft here, but 
With Deaver merging back out in traffic, this might help him be able to lay down a good lap time after coming off pit road. Now swings to the outside of Collins. Collins is coming to pit lane this time. Carter Friesen behind him along with Dylan Young. Let's see if first, second, and third are coming to pit lane. Well, first and second are. Dylan Young's going to stay out another lap. This is going to be interesting to see who cycles to where. There's Deaver. There's Carson Gum. Deaver can't pass him. He's trying. He's going to swing around on the outside. And Ryan Acosta's way ahead of both of them. So it looks like it's going to be Ryan Acosta cycling back to the top spot. And Deaver clears Carson Gums. Looks like he'll cycle the second. There's Dylan Young. We're still awaiting him to come to pit road. He's on pit lane now. Chris Dollerton and Diego Yepes have still yet to hit pit lane along with Sebastian Kukulon. They are in now as well. Jay Jefferson also on pit lane. And here comes Matt McIntyre, Austin LaPlante, a bunch of uh, Mitsubishi Lancers there. Alexander Rowe, Jessica Shelton. Cole Baker along with Patrick Smith. And I think that is going to cycle the race lead back around to Ryan Acosta with Cole Deaver in second. Carson Gum now back to third. And it's going to be a pretty good gap from Acosta back to Deaver. I think that could maybe be the only pit stop they'll have to make. The pit stops took place, what was it, between laps, well, let's say roughly 26 to 29. Boy, I mean, if, if we go close to lap 60, if that was as far as they could go, oh man, we could see some drivers have to pit in the closing minutes of this race. James Shelley's going to be on the tail end of the lead lap just ahead of Ryan Acosta. He was last time by scored in 31st. He's going to cross in 30, 30th now. Slow stop for Chris Dollarton, it looks like. Or was it? Is he still on the lead lap at the time? Uh, he's dropping back now to 11th, 15th. Yeah, he's a lap down, so he had an incident on pit road. Boy, third straight week that he's run into issues. Got Ryan Brommer and James Shelley. Brommer right now being scored in dead last. See when he crossed the line, if that's still where he is. And yeah, he is. Ryan Acosta is going to have some traffic to deal with up ahead, and we'll have to see if that's going to allow Cole Deaver to close in. He is second. Carson Gum right now is third. Jonathan Zorlin, there he is, he's in fourth. Fifth place is Mitchell Collins. Carter Friesen's in sixth. Seventh place is Dylan Pote now. Levi McIntyre currently in eighth. Ninth is Johnny Gardner, and clean your top 10 is Diego Yepes, who's looking to make it three for three in finishing the top 10 to start off the season. 11th is Trey Wright. 12th is Zach Winkle. 13th is Julius Anderson. 14th, Benny Watson. 15th is Sebastian Kukulon. 16th is Brooke Allen. 17th place is Jay Jefferson. Zach Rogers in 18th. 19th is Matt McIntyre, 20th Jordan Lopez, Kyle Matthews, who was dead last at the start. He's up to 21st at least. 22nd is Patrick Smith, 23rd Cole Baker, 24th is Jessica Shelton, Matthew Rodriguez is 25th, 26th is Austin LaPlante, Alexander Rowe in 27th. 28th, last car on the lead lap right now is James Shelley. He's in danger of being the first car a lap down though is Ryan Acosta's right behind him. 29th, first car lap down is Juan Garcia. 30th is Chris Dollerton. 31st is Quentin Moore. 32nd is Dylan Young. Remember, he was up in the top 10 earlier before the pit stops. 33rd is last week's winner, Derek Hamill. 34th place is Jesse Turner. 35th is our winner to open up the season, Wade Brummer. 36th is uh, Adam Garcia, who was last week's runner-up. And right now, dead last indeed, is the 87 of Ryan Brommer. And all 37 cars are still running, but not all of them on the lead lap. Battle right here for ninth between Johnny Gardner and Diego Yepes. Gardner's going to win out on that. 
Have to move back up to the front and see how Ryan Acosta is dealing with traffic. Looks like he's not really having to deal with James Shelley right now. Shelley keeping about a half car length ahead of Ryan Acosta. You've got Juan Garcia, first car a lap down behind him, then second place, Cole Beaver. So Deaver's got some work to do here and not a whole heck of a lot of time to do it with seven and a half minutes remaining. So those pit stops definitely shuffled stuff up. No doubt about that. And it may have given us our clear cut top 10. Because you got Diego Yepes. Let's jump back to him again once more. Running in that 10th position. There he is. Still trying to get ninth from Johnny Garner. But you see there's nobody behind him. There's 11th place. Nowhere even close to in the same screenshot. And that's Trey, or Zach Winkle rather in the 32. So I think if the top 10 can avoid having anything happen to them in these final seven minutes, I think that they are all going to get points. And of course for Ryan Acosta right now, he's in line to get the points lead heading into next week. Right now he, Cole Deaver, Carson Gum, Jonathan Zorlin, and Mitchell Collins would be in line for getting the bonus points here in our first power stage race. So now the question is, does Ryan Acosta try lapping James Shelley? Does Juan Garcia race Ryan Acosta hard to get bound to the tail end of the lead lap? And if so, does that open up the door for Cole Deaver to get up here and have a shot at Ryan Acosta? Acosta's biggest worries before the pit stops was Carson Gum. Carson Gum was hounding him. Now Carson Gum is back to third and he's over two seconds back. So I think right now the issue that Ryan Acosta is going to have is trying to keep Juan Garcia in that three car at bay. Cole Deaver is eight tenths of a second back. He is within striking distance. And there's a gap from him back to Chris Dollerton. So right now, Cole Deaver can worry about laying down lap times and hitting his marks. Ryan Acosta, on the other hand, has to make sure he doesn't make a slip up and allow Juan Garcia to the inside. Juan Garcia is going to run that corner wide. He's going to lose him some ground on the race leader. And I think that's the last thing that Cole Deaver wants to see. He doesn't want to see Juan Garcia fall back to him because then that means he has to deal with trying to bypass the lap machine, and that would allow Ryan Acosta to probably open up some daylight between himself and Deaver. Five minutes to go. And we are en route to our third different winner of the season in as many races, but more importantly, a driver that has struggled in the first two races of the season, an average finish of 33rd place in its first two starts, and Ryan Acosta could find himself in the span of one race jumping from 36, that's next to last in points folks, to the points lead. Bear in mind as well, second place in the normal scheme of things as far as the point system gets 18 points. With where Cole Deaver's running based off the bonus points he would get, the four bonus points in the power stage race, he'd have 22 points which would put him only three points behind Derek Hamill and Wade Brummer, who have won races this season. Derek Hamill would have 30 points, which would give him a five point gap back to Derek Hamill and Wade Brummer. The eyes now all on the clock, as it is now under four minutes remaining. And I don't think we're going to get anywhere close to lap 56, 57, 58, 59, which I think would have put us in a very interesting fuel situation, but I don't think we're going to get to that point. We'll probably be somewhere completing this race somewhere around lap 51, maybe 52, something like that. The pit stops definitely uh, cut into a big chunk of the time. Juan Garcia... Drifted up in the corner, Cole Deaver gonna get to his inside. Can he complete the pass though? If he does complete the pass, then there's nothing between himself and Ryan Acosta. But he's not gonna be able to make the pass at least this time by. And this is exactly what I was saying, what Cole Deaver did not need. To have to now deal with Juan Garcia because now he's the one having to change his priorities, change his concentration 
and Ryan Acosta now can go back to focusing on hitting his marks and you can see right there he's now opened up the gap for the race lead by over a second between himself and the 36. So it may be all she wrote for Cole Deaver who's now boxed in between a couple of lap machines. Carson Gum had a strong car early on but just couldn't get it done on pit road. Looks like he'll have to settle for third but it'll be his first points of the season. Then you got Jonathan Zorlin who finished top five last week. Looks like he'll have back-to-back -to -back top fives currently in that fourth spot. Mitchell Collins riding in fifth. Second time in three weeks that uh, he'll finish in the top 10. Carter Friesen will get his first points of the season. Same for Dylan Pote, running in seventh. Eighth place, Levi McIntyre. Second time in three weeks that he'll finish in the top 10. First points of the season for Johnny Gardner. And Diego Yepes will be the only driver right now that will have finished in the top 10 in all three of the first three races of the start of the season. Back up towards the front, Deaver's been able to shake Chris Dollerton. At the same time, he's lost ground to Juan Garcia, who's trying to catch back up to Ryan Acosta, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it under a minute and a half left in this race. I think we might have maybe two more laps before we complete this uh, race, or at least we get the white flag, that is. Coming around to hit the start-finish line with just over a minute remaining. So yeah, I think maybe, just maybe, we may have three more laps to go, if my timing is correct. Lap time still around the 36 second mark for the leader, Ryan Acosta. It's gonna be close. I mean, last week at Sonoma, we hit zeros right when the leader at the time, Derek Hamill, hit the start finish line. So that was the uh, white flag lap. I wonder if we'll have something like that here again. First time we ever came to this track, this has been some pretty doggone good racing too. I mean, I know that it's kind of been boring single file here after the pit stops were over, but there's been some good battling on track throughout. So, you know, it's typical of a road course, although this isn't really, I don't think, considered as much of a road course as it is a speedway. So there's really no banking here, but it has actually been a really good race. So we're about to hit 15 seconds. Let's see, are we gonna hit zeros before Ryan Acosta hits the start finish line? Oh wow, it's gonna be close. Coming here through the final corners. Ryan Acosta's pitting, as is Cole Deaver. Oh my goodness, and the zeros are on the clock. They haven't crossed the line yet. Who's the leader? Who is staying out? Who's risking it? It's Mitchell Collins in the 96. White flag in the air. Are you kidding me? I didn't think we were gonna have a fuel strategy race, but we do. Carter Fries is now up to second. Dylan Poteet's up to third. Oh my goodness, are you kidding? But here's the question. Is Collins gonna be able to make it? This is coming to the checkered flag. The white flag was displayed because Collins, or rather the time at the leader, the Ryan Acosta hadn't crossed the line, and Mitchell Collins is gonna make it. Mitchell Collins stays out. Mitchell Collins is going to win here today at Ice Planet. Unbelievable. Friesen's gonna get second. McIntyre third, Poteet had to pick. Yepes is gonna get fourth. Fifth place is gonna be Trey Wright. No, I'm sorry, that's not Trey Wright. That's Zach Winkle. Then fifth was Anderson, sixth was Poteet, and we'll take a look at the top 10, we'll be right back. Sorry for cutting that off so quickly, but I had to go and make sure that I paused the race so that way nobody crossed the line again, so that way everybody finishes in where they actually did finish, and I just barely caught it in time. So Mitchell Collins wins. Mitchell Collins, as consequence, is going to take the points lead over heading into next week based off of getting the power stage points, plus the fact Mitchell Collins had points from uh, the first race of the season at the Dakar opening stage. Carter Friesen will get second. McIntyre brings it home third. Yep is in fourth. Winkle was fifth. And then after the pit stops, look at some of these names that popped up into the top ten. Julian Anderson, or Julius Anderson, rather, will get sixth. Seventh place was Dylan Poteet 
who I'm pretty certain crossed the line on Pitt Road, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Eighth place was Brooke Allen. She's going to get her first points of the season. Same for Jay Jefferson gets ninth. And Sebastian Kukulon is going to get his second straight top 10 finish as he'll bring it home in the 10th position. Just missing out are cars Matt McIntyre, Zach Rogers, Jordan Lopez, Kyle Matthews, and Cole Baker. And then you look down through the rest of the finishing results here. And everybody did finish the race, though we did have five drivers at the close finish off the lead lap including the driver that won the first race of the season, Wade Brummer, finishing in 34th. And last week's winner didn't fare much better. Last car in the lead lap, 32nd. That was Derek Hamill. And as consequence, neither one of them are going to be heading into next week's race. As the overall points leader, that is going to be Mitchell Collins, who coming into this race had 12 points already, is going to get 30 points from this race with the win, and is going to have, I think, if my calculations are correct, a 17-point lead now over Derek Hamill and Wade Brummer heading into next week. But man, I was not expecting that to happen. I thought that it was going to take us getting to maybe lap 56, 57, 58 for it to be a fuel strategy race. But in the closing stages, it came down to a fuel mileage run. And it was Mitchell Collins reaping the rewards and picking up the win. So that's going to do it here for our third race of the season, our first power stage race for the Reese's Rally Car Series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We've shown you full finish results, and these are your point stains heading to next week. Next week is going to be a struggle for me because I guarantee you I will probably be pronouncing it three different ways, and every way will be incorrect. We are going to, I believe it's pronounced Nürburgring. I call it Nürburgring, Nuremberg-ring, and New Burger. But anyway, we will see you guys next time as you've been watching a production of the Answer Ray. I'm losing it. This has also been a race of the NRSL. And we will see you guys next week as Mitchell Collins takes a checkered flag here today at Ice Planet.